Rachel. Hello. Hi, Hi Ash. Oh, there we go. There I am. How are you? All good, sir. Didi. <laughs> So we're doing all these lovely chats. Like, yeah. Is this our last one now? I think this is our last one. Oh, yeah. Rachel, no pressure. No anything. pressure. Oh. <laughs> what I like is that all of everyone from all over the world, you might not have been able to come before. Yeah, this is a whole new thing for us. Yeah. So the whole no, fact that we can't do it in person has opened up many doors. I know, it's really nice. Really, really oh, nice. Lots of people saying nice stuff. Today we are talking to Rachel. And Rachel is daughter of a shepherd. Um, and we spin some of your yarns for you. Uh, and yeah, do where shall we start? Do you want to start with um, how we met? And yeah. How you, and how you became daughter of a shepherd. Okay. So, well, I my dad has a, looks after a flock in... Um, Eskrick Park Estate just outside York in Yorkshire and the he I was visiting it was like Easter time and I was visiting him and they'd had the check through from the wool board for the previous year's clip and it came to like 94 pence for about 400 fleeces um, um, and so they decided not to send the next year's clip and it ended up sitting in a barn and um I'm a knitter and I, I, they're Hebridean sheep, which are very, very dark. Um, and I was like, well, I'd quite like to knit with the wool. And a few months rolled on and various things happened. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to give it a go and see what happens. And I took the mortgage deposit that I'd saved and decided <laughs> to spend that on to <laughs> yeah, see if I could get one. I was like, what's the most I can lose is like, all my mortgage deposit. I, <laughs> my did you tell Dan? <laughs> yeah, I did. Tell, I did tell Dan, but I mean, by that stage, it was going to happen anyway. Whether he Aww. said, "Yeah," but yeah, he was like, "Yeah, do it. See what happens." And um, and then I needed to find a mill, so I visited visited Yarndale. This was back in 2015, I think. Which is it's, it's like so long ago now. Uh, but yesterday like. at the same time. Frankie was about 12 then. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we were all so much younger. Less wrinkles. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I chatted to a few people and was sent, and everybody basically sent me your direction. Said, I'll go and talk to John Arben. He'll sort you out. And... Um, Oh, you poor soul. The crazy man oh. in a horse. Note that I was said to John and not you, Juliet. You'd have gone, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're a lady. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> if you had cake, I'd have been, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I didn't have cake. Oh, well, I would have been. Had I have known, I could have brought cake. But um, anyway, I presented John with a... a handful of fleece and he was like yeah we'll give it a go and then he told me to email you Juliet which I did afterwards and then she was like nah because <laughs> he can't remember <laughs> he was like, John doesn't yeah, ask who is, who you is? Is? <laughs> let's face it <laughs> he said one of your very diplomatic emails um pretending that you knew exactly what I was talking about who you were obviously all this information <laughs> <laughs> and um and it went from there and you you did spin my wall and um it launched the following march up at, in edinburgh i think i think it arrived with me literally the week before yeah. edinburgh yarn festival that's pretty good going I remember for us scrapping to make it <laughs> <laughs> we were probably having to label our own yarn in the van on the way to edinburgh but we got you yours <laughs> It was, pre it was pretty close to that, I think. It was almost like you were taking it to Edinburgh and I was going to label it once I got there. But um, yeah, and I, I think you sent through about 250 skeins and I was expecting quite a lot more, but I'd also had a conversation with you saying, I'm sorry, we can't, we can't spin any more of it because the fibre's not long enough. So it was, it's Hebridean, it was spun as 100% Hebridean, but the quality of it wasn't quite fine enough for you to spin as a hundred percent so at that point I was like 
okay, well, it worked and now what do we do? Because I've still got all this fibre that's been washed and is now sitting in your mill in Devon. So we had a chat, didn't we? And, and John suggested it was blended with the swabbles, which is, which you, you buy from Exmoor, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's Devon. It's, it's, there's a lot of swabbles here. It's lovely. It is lovely. Yeah. It's really nice. A similar, similar shade, isn't it? Yeah, so it works so it well. Works really well. Both very and sheepy. Great smell. Both of them have a great smell. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It does smell very sheepy. You like <laughs> you can sniff your own yarn now, aren't you? I can't I can not. I can, smell it. I can smell it from here. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it sends the cats slightly la la, doesn't it? Yeah, my cat goes berserk but there you go do you have any um of the 100 percent original left i suppose you've kept some for yourself have you yeah i think i've got about three skeins left and i always i, I i'd kept enough back to knit a sweater and i've gradually given them away or no you must keep the rest then no i will keep the rest i will keep the rest yeah so how did that first edinburgh go um oh it was it was amazing. It was very emotional because obviously there'd been, well, I'd, I'd now got no money. <laughs> so... <laughs> no pressure, no pressure at the show. Yeah, no pressure. So it was kind of, it was like this huge release of relief. And I, th I think I spent most of the festival with a hanky. Yeah, um, you were next to us, weren't you? <laughs> Just across the That's why she It was, was amazing. Though, like, That's why she was crying because she was next to us. <laughs> <laughs> but so the response from people about the yarn had just been incredible and it I, I really nice um, I, was completely away. I wasn't expecting it at all yeah the story is yeah. amazing the fact that it's so close to you and you're so involved with it it's like a family affair it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing and I think at the end of the day because we only commission spin we can only do do it for so many people and I think, to be truthfully honest, your wonderful story won us over and we were like, oh, this is crap. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You no. can <laughs> oh. Well, and you were doing it for all the right reasons, you know. You wanted, you know, you want, yeah. it's lovely. It's it absolutely lovely. lovely. And it's much nicer to spin with those walk balls in it. <laughs> <laughs> much better behave. Well, you also spin the... Um, me. I love that stuff. It's it is lovely. It's slightly paler. I'll just. It's I'll such a great color because it's got the creamy, uh, creamy white Exmoor blue face, but then the Hebrideans kind of got a bit of a red tinge as well, doesn't it? It does. And right. then it's got it this wart ball still, which is the brownie chocolate, but with the white bits. I know, crazy bit. Very interesting. I like it. Yeah, it's quite um. It's still quite warm for a grey. It's a nice warm yeah. brownie grey. So we've just got Brenda saying she remembers meeting Rachel and seeing the John Arban crew at the Edinburgh Festival and she enjoyed it. Oh, so that must have been nice. Yeah. Do you miss seeing people in, in, uh, in, in real, real life? <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Zoom is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Is. It really. It is. I mean, otherwise none thing. of us would see each other at all. And da, da, da. Uh, somebody said. When the Hebridean wool is spun, do you separate the fleece into the longer and shorter strands of fibre? I'm assuming they mean the staple. And um, do you grade it yourself, Rachel? Well, originally I I didn't that and and for that very first spin, I didn't I didn't grade it other, apart from taking out the really the really low quality fleeces yeah. because because I was using what was essentially waste, if I'd have graded it, I'd have just created more waste. And yeah. it, mm. it, that wasn't something that I wanted to do. I wanted to use what was officially, well, not officially, but what was being seen as waste and, and make it into something that you could work with and prove that it had more worth. Mm. So, but now I do go through and I do grade now. Yeah. And I do um, my so then you kind of, we kind of end up with a uniform uh, length of staple when it get by the time it gets to us here. Um, I love that somebody has asked, "How did the Hebra Zebra come together?" We call it Hebra Zebra. I love that you call it Hebra Zebra. <laughs> uh, so, well, the Hebra, 
we had this we had the special hair you know the the mile that you spun for me yeah. last well we did it as a joint thing didn't we that we called Zebra. Love Zebra Love that. that was but we always did the Hebra Zebra before that came from the drawing John did didn't it, it did. <laughs> <laughs> on the box yeah, so the the Ram Jam that started I was um helping at the Hebridean shearing and got chatting to one of the shearers and he just said he could pick up bits that were otherwise being thrown away when he was going around small holdings and, ba- and doing back garden shears and things like that. So it was fleece that was going to be thrown away. And he gathered all that up. And then um, he texted me at the end of summer. He's like, I've got some fleece for you. And I was like, oh, fantastic. And um, when he arrived, he actually had a trailer full. <laughs> no. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, a trailer like a horse box size trailer for <laughs> I was expecting like a couple of bags <laughs> and then what was it in bags or did yeah. you just open the trailer and it all spring out yeah, so it, was in, it was in bags <laughs> and he had kindly put it into black and white for me oh nice so um yeah it was a bit more than I was expecting um but from there we yeah it, it's there's about 12 different breeds because you know that's just what he he finds when he yeah. goes around so we spin a black and a white and then blend greys yeah with the room jam and that's all done at the woolen spinning mill up in uh, yorkshire yeah they're so they're lovely, lovely. light owlers light owlers they're yeah mark's lovely yeah really nice not as nice as us but i've nice. never not seen i'd like to go i'd like to go as well that's what me me and it's organized the Falklands. it's a lovely mate it's um i think he's been on that site for about I think it's been on the site for about 150 years wow. and they've been running it for at least 50 years yeah, really um, so it is a proper mill uh, with some really terrifying a terrifying staircase I seem to remember as well but and uh, do you still get the fleece from your dad no the, the last years the last year or so I haven't done just because the quality is just not it's not been it would have been really difficult for me to find something to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll try again this year. Hope, I think the way the weather's looking, hopefully it'll be a little bit better. Yeah, because um, we had this big discussion with Andrew Bowman earlier in our little fibre chat about how the weather can really affect how the sheep's wool grows. It's so interesting. Yeah, um, and it, it was so wet last year. Yeah, I can imagine. It was such a wet winter, it just... Um, so obviously they it's so mattered you can't you can't do anything with it which mm-hmm. is frustrating but at least it then if it goes to the wool board they'll sell it on as cotted and it might be used for insulation or something like yeah. that so yeah how many sheep does he have oh it varies sort of anything from like three to six hundred depending on lamb you know lambing oh. time things like that but they graze quite a large area and they're they're out of sight most of the time on the um, on the nature reserve. They just potter around and do their things, and then they're gathered in sort of three or four times a year for checks and shearing. They're brought onto a different part of the estate for lambing. Um, so yeah, they're, um, they sort of earn their keep really. <laughs> yeah. Aww. My favourite type of knit, I just love garter stitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just happily knit garter stitch all the time. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> I, I do knit other things, but um, so I, I, and the heritage, the Hebridean and Zwarbles works really nicely with um, mm-hmm. garter stitch as well. So for shawls, it's perfect. Shawls and blankets and oh. such like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, See, no. it's really oh, and it's got a little bit of lacy on top. What's that? With a little bit. Of lacing, yeah. This one is. Oh, it's by Pauline Populek. And it's called. Oh, it's called the Sentinel. Cool. And it's one of the start at a corner with yeah, yeah. three yeah. stitches and increase and add a bit of lace on at the edging. And it's a really nice knit, and I wear this so much as well. I think it's probably my most worn shawl. Mm. 
How does it? And then I made a similar. What is that? Sorry. How does it fare? Under Say that again. Underwear? Does it wear very well? Oh, it's it, yeah. It's like iron. It just doesn't pill. Nice. So I've had. I think I've been wearing this for about four years, and it still looks like new. That's incredible. And is that a sample you're wearing. <laughs> is it a sample? This. Yeah. No, the shawl. <laughs> no, the shawl is the shawl. Your sample. You yes. wear it. That I wear. Yeah. We're not allowed. That, we're does not that like sound that. familiar, Frankie? Yeah. Wearing samples. Only Frankie's allowed to yeah. wear a sample. So show us some more things. I know you've got. One. Okay, this one. It's a similar style. So corner. The increase in triangle. And this is in broom. I don't know if you can see it's got bobbles in. Oh, and so some nice. cables. I love. And it's huge as well. It's really squishy and really huge. Um, this one's by Isabel Kramer. And I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I can look it up and let you know. Her stuff is beautiful, Isabel's. It is. It is. It was originally in an Amirisu. Oh, yeah. Um, Helen likes it too. Beautiful oh. shawl. And then I also do crochet as well. I'm a, I like knitting and crochet. And we have... I don't know why I'm showing you skeins because they all look the same on Zoom, don't they? Basically, <laughs> it's like this is the lace weight. So this is a this is spun by light Owlers, wool and spun, and it's a single ply Hebridean lace. Aye. Sort of a heavy lace, about six hundred meters. So it's not too fiddly to work with, and that's really nice for crochet. This is one of Ooh. Joanne Scraces. Lovely. I'm really I seem to have a thing for these triangle dolls. I've just really... They're just so wearable, aren't they? Yeah, really... They're really nice to work on. Um, I love really wearing stuff, but John hates it, so he won't do it. <laughs> That's right. You know what to do when he's on holiday. <laughs> um, Esther's asked, what breed are the colourful skeins behind you? Ah, so these are, um, they're Ram Jam. They're my Ram Jam sport weight. But I work with Julia Billings of Woolen Flower. All right. And she naturally dyes a range for me. Yeah, no. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? They're really nice. We've got about, we've got 10, 10 or 11 colours in total, including some indigos that she right. does. Were they inspired by the sky or like nature wasn't it that's right yeah different different light through the sky yeah mm -hmm. different sort of um that's pictures very that i take and photographs yeah and uh, i've been collaborating with her for quite a while now she um she's she's originally known for these tweed pouches that she oh i love that i've got a number of those <laughs> they're, oh, they're so lovely and she makes them out of um repurposed tweed skirts and jackets that she finds um and I was a huge fan and I kind of like fangirl stalked her a little not stalked but I was like please will you please can we do something together and she's so lovely and she was like it would be an absolute pleasure and we've been working together for about four years now so she does a range of pouches for me um as well as the the hand dyed yarn which is just it's a fairly new thing the hand dyed yarn but it's it's so lovely to work with her she's an incredible person and uh, so knowledgeable and so so generous with her her knowledge as well um, mm. and it's, it's nice as well because as I work on my own uh it's nice to collaborate with other people and have some different input from somewhere and keep mm. ideas going so I stock quite a lot of other products in the shop or will collaborate with people on dyeing different yarns and it's just nice to have a have something fresh yeah yeah definitely do you have a real life shop Rachel no I don't I don't unfortunately um I did an open studio a couple of Christmases ago but obviously Covid's made things difficult yeah. so maybe one day we'll be able to do that again 
Yeah. Do you sell it through any other shops? Does Loop have it? Loop has it. Um, who's in you? There's Loop in the UK. Uh, the Woolly Thistle, but she's online in the US. Mm. Um, I'm trying to remember. It's terrible. I can't remember all my retailers now. Mm. Uh, Cross and Woods in the Netherlands. Uh, there's a new shop opening in France that's taken it. Ooh. So that's nice because yeah. with the EU as well, with the with Brexit and everything, it's it's nice to have some EU stockists. <laughs> Same as all. No, let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, Sue Granfield. Hello. Hi, Hi Sue. Um, she said she used to work with Jules in Melbourne. Oh, oh really? Oh, of course, yes, yes. And Brenda says she's enjoyed the books from your shop too. Oh, I have too. And how do you choose the ones you carry? You have some lovely books. So this is okay. going to be a good past story, isn't it, of your pre, pre-designer pre days, isn't it? Pre-knitting life, yeah. Um, so I used to be a bookseller, Um for, and I ran a children's department, which I absolutely loved. And um, reading was has <clears throat> been one thing that I've always done. When I was 18 months old, mum took me to the doctors because I used to sit on my push along trolley of bricks and read. And she was worried that I'd hurt my eyes. So she took me to the doctors. <laughs> and I've just, I so reading was my really big thing until I, I got back into knitting and um, so I worked in the bookshop and then it's still such a big part of my life and there's so many amazing books around about knitting but also about nature and our connection to the natural world and sort of historical books about past things you know past times but that I think are really still very relevant and um, so the books that I stock in the shop were basically quite a selfish act because I was like, oh, it'll be nice to have some books. <laughs> and I'd like to read some more books as well. So I I tend to buy from small publishers, small independent publishers where possible. Um, I like reissues. Um, there's a really good publisher that I buy from called Little Toller who are based in Dorset, who have the most beautiful, full nature books um and I've also now started add, adding children's illustrated books in which goes back to the job that you're going to end used up to do so book. yeah what's that sorry what did you're you say end up with a book you're probably. going to end up with a book <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> books and wool <laughs> with a cake cool. shop in the middle What's your favourite books you've got at the moment? New ones in. Have you got any to hand? This is the uh, Knitting in Morocco, which is oh. um, written by an American lady, Irene, who spends a lot of time out in the High Atlas Mountains. And she um, she's gathered together, she's lived in, the, in a village for, I think, about a a year or so and she's got basically from just chatting to the shepherds and the villagers she's gathered together a lot of historical information about how they farm their sheep and um, their knitting techniques and then she's also done museum research and um, written down some of the patterns that have never they won't have ever been written down they've just been handed by mouth so it includes sort of some sock patterns and hat patterns and things like that but it's also got this historical and cultural context which is really really interesting so totally different this is one of my favorites at the moment it's um the lost orchard by raymond blanc right. the chef yeah yeah and all about yeah. his um he's planted two and a half thousand trees at his restaurant in oxfordshire wow and wow. i know they're a collection of um old English and French um, varieties that would have otherwise sort of died off or to, to keep some of them going. But also he writes about, he writes about different varieties and tells you what they can be used for. But he's so excited about apples. He's so excited. It's, and, it, and it's quite an infectious book because then you're like, I'm really excited about apples. 
and I want to try this and I want to try that one <laughs> and you can hear him with his lovely accent yeah. um it's it's a really wonderful book and you can just literally dip in and out of that so that's one of my favorites do you want any more yeah <laughs> well, keepers of the sheep is a really interesting book that's that's the one about the high atlas yeah yeah, yeah. So oh, that's good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. People are enjoying the book chat, so carry on. <laughs> um, in the garden, this is a fairly new one. Essays about gardening. Oh. Um, from window boxes to the manor houses. Mm. And so quite nice summer reading. This was my May book <laughs> because it just <laughs> rained all <laughs> May. <laughs> It didn't stop raining. Did it rain because you were reading that? Maybe, but no, I did pick it up because I was like, I need to reread the rain book. <laughs> and this is this is four walks in English weather. Ah, nice. Oh, lovely. And, and she gives names to the different types of rain. So there's kelching, which is raining hard. <laughs> Blunks, they're sudden showers. So it's a it's a nice ex it's kind of like a celebration of our beloved English rain. That's Aww. fantastic. We have a yarn called Mizzle, one of our colours uh, Mizzle, which is a very Devon rain. Isn't it's, the, it? it's that it's the wet rain. It's the sort of cloud, isn't it? Yeah. It's the sort of I mean it's so light. Yeah. So it kind of goes everywhere. I feel like I'm walking through a cloud. I'm getting wet, but it's not really raining. Yeah. Such a good this all kind of makes your hair frizz, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, everything makes like you, be, you sort of get a halo from Mizzle. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Rain halo. I have um, not been to your online bookshop. I'm now devastated oh, to say. I'm going to want to all of things. So what, what have you got coming up? Have you got any secret plans for new yarns or, or new projects that you're planning for later in the year that you are allowed to share with us or not? Um, well, I've got, I have a container um, that I rent on another farm. <laughs> what is it full of? <laughs> can you guess? Can you say? <laughs> I can guess, yes. It's full of fleece and some of those fleeces I've, I've sort of gathered over the last three and four years. They're from small, really small rare breed flocks. And I've finally got enough to have a couple of them spun. So um, there's one coming through hopefully at the end of summer, which I'm very excited about, which is a better not actually a better not no, because that's okay. no, no me i'll talk about it and then it'll <laughs> know that there's new, new things on the horizon yeah so you're working on secret stuff that's definitely yeah there's, there's probably about three uh, um breed specific yarns coming through Ooh. um into for the winter but it's the, the thing is with doing this i mean it's it's so ex it's such an exciting thing <laughs> the whole the whole gather the fleece and have it washed and have it spun and then it arrives back and it's amazing but it's also utterly terrifying because at any of those stages something could go wrong and you're left with nothing and there's no and once it's gone wrong there's no getting it back that's exciting Rachel that's not terrifying living on the edge no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't live life on the edge so um, for me it's very terrifying yeah. Yeah. Things like that never happen. I don't know what you're talking about. Ha, 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 ha. Um, we've got a couple of questions if you'd like to answer them. Um, sure. Lorraine is asking about the Hebridean lace. Uh, how soft is it next to the skin and the ram jam as well? So I always find this a really difficult question to answer because... I'm not super sensitive to wool. I can wear pretty much anything next to the skin. Um, the Hebridean lace is quite crunchy when you're working with it, but it does soften up. Um, just gonna... It's probably a little bit tickly, but it's it's kind of very rare that I make things that are going to be right next to my skin as well. Mm. So, um, you know, if if you if you buy something and it's true and you truly can't bear it, just drop me an email and I'm. I'm sure I can sort something. Yeah, because people say the, uh, the, 
so different. Yeah. It is totally different. Yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm quite sensitive to alpaca, which most people would mm. bathe in, I think, if they could. So, um, yeah, it's so subjective. The, the ram jam is definitely more rustic. The sport weight is softer than the worsted. So if that helps as well. Yeah. Oh, my dog's just arrived in. No. <gasps> Dee Dee. <laughs> Dee Dee, would you like to ask, is there any other questions? Um, Penny says, are you planning on writing your own book? Wool, cakes, countryside, yarns, etc. I think you should, Rachel. Oh, walls. If it would involve a lot of research of cakes. <laughs> Always. Yes. You definitely could do. I did write a book. You do they? I could, well, I did write I did write a book a you few did. years ago. And I and I did title it volume one and I've I've got volume two planned, but um it's just finding the time to press go on it. There's there's so much to juggle. But, um, there will be another book coming, but there is this one, which is and it's fabulous. It's amazing. For you. I would so like to. Um, there's great pictures in it. There's some beautiful. Yeah, it kind of tells you how I got started, and it shows yeah. you pictures of the of Dad's estate, and then there's ten really knitting and crochet patterns. Yeah, it's a really great book. There's requests. CD, <coughs> by the way. Oh, hang on. No. CD. <laughs> Bless her. Bless her. Sue, Sue says, I have, I have a skein of the lace on my desk. I would say it's soft enough to wear near your feet. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Thank you. That's that's good. Yeah. And Candida says her nickname is Dee Dee. Oh! <laughs> so, excited that we're yeah. waving at her. She was named after Dee Dee Ramon. <laughs> um going back to the books i would love to actually rather than a nitty book see you write a uh like literature book about those lovely walks you always post about you could do days in the lives of your walks and with your dog and what you do with your knitting day i could yeah that'd be nice thank you oh, well that's a lovely idea <laughs> that is a lovely idea basically uh I'd, lo I'd love to, I did, I was doing quite a lot of writing before I started the business and it's just, this becomes all so all consuming and I, I really need to start, I need to get a, at least one pair of hands to help me. Dan, my partner, helps an awful lot. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> he's just saying yes. <laughs> but um, yeah. I need to find more time basically to do things that I really love doing as well because you do end up logistics and paperwork and as you know yeah, yeah. you need to start growing asparagus as well Rachel we we've planted our beans our beans are doing well but Dee Dee likes to eat them um <laughs> yeah much left of them so I don't think we'll manage asparagus. We've had eight asparagus from the allotment now. Eight, thank you. Have you? Did you have them all in one go? Four more than last year. That's amazing. Did you eat them all in one go or individually? Like you had one for Sunday lunch in April. <laughs> we had the one each day between us. It took a little while. <laughs> um, Brenda saying when uh, they wash their uh, Daughter of a Shepherd yarn or John Arban yarns that they put a hair conditioner in and I've heard that's a great idea actually and um, that can yeah. soften it up but you do lose a bit of the lovely hay smell. Fabric Rachel. Um, oh yes I do. Fabric. Oh of course your actual woven fabric. It's 100% Hebridean tweed cloth. Um, this is so it's all from the fiber is from yorkshire and spun uh, like i spin the the yarn and then it goes up to the isle of mull to a dal anish um which is a I've, I've, i went up a couple of years ago and it's it's in the most incredible spot um overlooking the the atlantic and uh yeah, it's it's beautiful. If you get, ever get a chance to visit, and Mull's just incredible as well. 
um, and they weave it for me. Um, it's kind of a heavy, heavy tweed, so it's good for outer garments, for or for upholstery. And this is what um, Jules uses for the pouches mm. as well. So my sewing skills are. I did a fashion degree, but my sewing skills are just not not that great. So if you're a bit <laughs> unsure about your sewing, you can always just get one ready made. Fabric is amazing. Um, it is beautiful. Yeah, I've had I've, I've had some amazing um, stories actually. Like people who bought it and had suits made, and a guy in um, I think in Sweden, he's he's had a couple of lengths and had things made for him wow. to wear. Yeah, and they also so as well as the fabric, um, Adal Anish also make blankets. That we occasionally do blankets. What's the name of the weaver? Someone's asking. Um, it's Adal Anish. Um, I won't try and spell it off the top of my head right now. But oh, someone else. Yes. Friends. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got a helpful assistant bringing me a blanket. Hang on a second. So I'm thinking, how sexy would a like little one seater chair be in that upholstery fabric? Oh, nice. Wow. And again, it's it just wears like iron, so it's it's something you're going to have for many many years. Mm -hmm. many, awesome. Many years. Let's see the blanket. It's kind of, they're all, um, you can't, I don't know if you can see it. They're all, um, they're woven and then they're sent for finishing and they're brushed. So they've got oh, wow. a soft finish and the oh. fringing is put on. Love the fringing. Do they put the fringing on afterwards? No, it's done, it's done during the weaving. Yeah. So well, it's done, cut, two blankets are cut and they leave these strands and we, yeah, just yeah. it. At the finishes yeah so the like because the last ban batch of blankets we did we used some yarn that you guys had tried to spin for me which was a it was going to be a broom lace weight and i i think john had had enough <laughs> no i think, I it, think was, it was a very short staple it was very it? short and it and was the breaking thing, wasn't it the worsted spinner we struggle we really yeah. struggle with the short well, staple. It spun, but it wouldn't fold right? yeah we couldn't yeah. and john is so particular so if it's not if it's if he's not happy with it he won't finish it because no which i appreciate because i, I wouldn't you know i trust i trust you guys completely so it's meant you can use it for something else rather than it all being yeah, you sent you sent the singles on to me yeah. and then I sent that to Ardlanish and they twisted it with some Hebridean and turned it into blankets. So it didn't go to waste. We'd never really have had the blankets without us doing that, you see. Exactly. Exactly. We knew. We knew we did it on the mm, Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Blankets are really nice. <laughs> yeah, the blankets are good. They're really good. I, I really like making those. I just happily do a lot more if possible so Aww. lots of people loving the blankets lots Thank of people you. wanting you to write a book Rachel I yeah. think you've started something here and mostly they want the book to involve wool and cake so you know yeah someone said a pop-up for a live mill open weekend yeah wool and cake. So bring all your books next time yeah we were out collecting fleece yesterday um and we always come away with something else, like some farm product. Um, it can be, we've had some really amazing sausages, some lamb sausages ones. But yesterday we got um, some duck eggs, which are oh, so beautiful. amazing for Victoria Sponge. So. Are they? Duck eggs in the Victoria Sponge, now there's a thing. Oh, hints and tips. It's, it's apparently a bit of a Women's Institute um, tip. Wow, I've never even... That's yeah, nice. use duck eggs instead of hen's eggs. Awesome. You can try that, Rachel, and bring it down. We're very happy to accommodate I'll do that. You. I can do that. Uh, everyone's <laughs> saying it's been lots of fun. We've got someone that stayed up to 1.30 a.m. to be with us. Goodness, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Patricia. That's very kind. Um, so, yeah, should we say goodbye and thank you? Well, Rachel, it's been a pleasure. It's lovely to see you. I wish I'd seen you in person a bit more. Yeah, but we have. No, well, we'll, you know, we will meet again. And we love what you do. It's oh, thank you. Wonderful. Everything. And thank you for thank you for making it possible to do what I do. 
Thank you. And and also just for being so nice. It's so lovely to work with you, you lot. It really oh, is. No, you're, you're so you're fabulous. Lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it wouldn't have been the same without you being part of this because you normally come in person to our open weekend. And we had to we had to have you. Yeah. I only come for the cake, you know that, don't you? Yeah, if my dad hasn't eaten eaten it all before oh, you get there. He's the little pasty now. Oh, he loves a pasty. He does love a pasty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for popping in. And we've had the best time. We have had the best time, and it's been amazing sharing it with lots of people. It has been. And all right. our special guests, and it's been lovely. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.